Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to discuss in brief about a game of the evil thoughts where we will find out how the thoughts are created and being controlling us. This is part 1, from chapter 11 of my book, Wake Up. They control us from other dimensions. We think we are the creator of our thoughts, are we? Or are we only an output device of them? Why are we so sophisticated that even a simple thing related to our life is profoundly complex to comprehend? Is somebody sitting in a different dimension and sending his will through a biochemical process that produces images and sound in the brain? Even if we try to understand some of it, the truth keeps changing due to its own process of evolution. Something that can be so true today may not be the same after some time. Why is there a need for constant change and updates around and within us? Most of our actions are driven by our thoughts. Imagination is an animated world of thoughts, if there is no thought, there is no imagination. Thus, thoughts are the mother of all inventions and the cause of all destruction. When a thought arises in our mind, it produces an electromagnetic wave in the brain. It is because when electrically charged particles present in the brain vibrate, these waves are created. The strength of these waves may be less potent than other waves such as radio waves, infrared, UV, etc. However, their functions in animals' life is tremendously vocal. We know that the electricity generated in the brain can power a light bulb by 10 to 25 watts. Thus, the physical effects of thoughts cannot be ignored or belittled. Our mind, a virtual storage of all memories, is in contact with the environment without a break. The conscious mind does not let us see what is happening in the virtual world at the subconscious level. Thus, our body is nothing more than a machine with limited access to its own body. The inner mind has the answers to all questions we seek because it is the storage of all coding required to make a living, and it inherits all the knowledge regarding the origin of life and its purpose of it. But we are not given access to read it because when we do, we get to know the secret behind evolution, including biological evolution. The time or the impact of entropy does not work for our inner mind, and the programs written and stored there are transferable. One day, we may be able to do so. If this happens, we become immortal, just like an amoeba. Then, we will live a life of philosophy that this body is not more than a piece of cloth for our consciousness. Our inner mind is alert and recording all data constantly even if the environment is not risky for our lives and there is no threat. The theory of evolution says that this type of hyper-alertness relates to the high risks and dangers of surrounding where our ancestors lived millions of years ago, which are still inherited in our brain. This means our inner mind is not evolved fully to know the difference between the times back then and now. The threat we face today is far more advanced, most of which are from ourselves, inner species destruction. Maybe our mind does not recognize our species as a threat to the entire species. If the mind was constantly evolving, why did it not delete some unnecessary fears or phobias that have no purpose in keeping us safe today? Because the mind collects data but does not have the authority to delete or manipulate them. Most of us as humans have the same instincts and fears regardless of where we are from. We all see a hideous image in our mind when we suddenly glimpse anything in the dark, sometimes, we mistake our jacket for a standing devil next to us. Day or night, our mind is persistently alerting us to be safe. This threat detection program in our mind is so strongly coded in every single bit of memory that we often respond unknowingly to them. When we are not exposed to many things, our imagination is limited too. There will be fewer variants in our thoughts. Thoughts are not born automatically, they are created but we feel they are actually born. Our mind wants to collect data from the outer world in the form of some sort of experience. Those data are saved and preserved in the form of images and emotions. Does our mind want to evolve, or does information collection happen automatically? Thoughts are the pathway that connects to a different dimension, a higher dimension. When we talk to someone on a telephone a thousand miles away, we cannot go there instantly as we are talking. The wires or the waves are the actual media that connect two persons from two places. The waves of cell phones, by the way, cannot be seen or touched by us, just like the thoughts which connect our external world with the other dimension. There is a chance that somebody is sitting on the chair and learning through us. He is controlling you via our thoughts and emotions or me. There could be many of them. Each of us may be a device to collect experiences from our world, from this dimension. The thing we are doing, or we may want to do, probably, they desperately want to experience. It could be true that our consciousness may be our thoughts and experiences. They are highly manipulated or motivated by what we do because they learn through us and become powerful through us. Therefore, we are probably told to be a better person and follow higher power to achieve heaven after death. 
we are not more than a gunny pig of an experiment and do not alleviate. If somebody gets a better place due to our better and auspicious deeds, then the person who is connected to us through the help of thoughts and the mind serves him in another dimension. The body and the brain stay here in our world, and the data collected and stored in mind escape to the new place of a higher dimension. If the entity connected to us with our mind passes his examination, those data will be deleted, this is done even if he fails the test, if not, he will have to repeat the game of birth and death to accumulate more experiences. Based on his performance manipulating his connected human, he gets the level of the game of his life. This may be designed for them to learn and advance, or it can be a part of their punishment, they cannot get out of their shell until they pass the social experiment test. Their learning process cannot be compared with the act of us playing video games. In video games, the character created in our image are connected to us with the help of remote control, and we can do what the programs allow us to do with it. We use two senses in this act, eyes and ears. This thing cannot teach us as much as we can to them. We are connected to our specific entity with all our senses, thus, their technology is thousands of times advanced and complex. Thoughts are the modes of connection of us with them. Thoughts are a kind of feedback from them. When we deploy all our senses such as eyes, nose, ears, the sense of taste, tongue, the sense of touch, skin, and much more, they try to accumulate information in a great deal of amount, as much as possible, from our surrounding. Thus, the number of thoughts depends on the type of surrounding we are in and the ability of all our senses. Not all of us is in the same surrounding, and neither do we all utilize our senses at the same optimal level. The more we see things, the more curiosity and thoughts arise, the more we talk and hear, and the more imagination we create. These imaginations and thoughts are nothing more than the curiosity and desire of those entities who want to level up in their world, and we, the bodies, are their faithful slaves, we do not have a choice either. For a long time, people have realized this fact and desperately tried to deny the slavery of those entities onto them. They refused to reproduce offspring and took lifelong celibacy. They also figured out how the information is fed to the mind through the senses, then devised ways like meditation to control the mind. When there are no more offspring, those entities' game of evil thoughts will collapse, and when all senses are shut down, they will not receive any experiences via us. They knew that the mind was the source of all agonies. Maybe we are created by them, perhaps we meant to serve them, but we have evolved into self-thinking machines, and some of us are evolved to such a level that we do not even care about the creator because there was an evil intention behind the creation. Thank you for watching. Please, comments your thoughts and wait for part 2. For more videos, subscribe to Quantum Awareness.